So good morning, dear colleagues. So uh, today we have gathered here for PG defense of Mikhail Bulavsky and uh, his PhD thesis title is Hybrid Functional Materials Based on single World Carbon Nanotubes. Um, so my name is Alexander Kvashnin, I am a chairman today in today's session. <clears throat> yes, and uh, let me introduce myself. So I have completed a bachelor study from the Siberian Federal University and then obtained a master and PhD degrees from Moscow Institute of Physics and Technology. And after that, to get the habilitation from the Mises University here in Moscow. Uh, during my work, I have held uh, different visiting research positions in USA and Belgium. Uh, has been a leader of different grants, including the Russian Science Foundation grant, Russian Foundation for Basic Research, and UMNIC grants, and some other programs. Uh, I have authored four patents and more than 70 publications with an H index of 30. And currently, I'm a full professor at the Project Center for Energy Transition ESG here in Skoltech. And uh, uh, my research interests include the computational uh, investigation of different materials properties, development of new methods for calculations using artificial intelligence and other quantum chemical methods. Uh, yeah, please, next. Uh, let me introduce our three members. First is uh, Dr. Yulia Ioni from the Kunakov Institute of General and Inorganic Chemistry of Russian Academy of Sciences. So Yulia graduated from the Lomonosov Moscow State Academy of Fine Chemical Technology in 2010, and then she received her PhD in 2013. And since 2009, she is an employee at Kurnakov Institute of General and Inorganic Chemistry of Russian Academy of Sciences. And she is also currently a permanent researcher at the same institute and supervising the graphene oxide chemistry research group. And uh, she is also uh, conducting research and teaching at the Russian Technology University, Mireya. She has authored more than 30 publications and three patents devoted to graphene-related nanosized materials with an H index of 13. Uh, she has been acting as a PI in three projects supported by Russian Foundation for Basic Research, Russian Science Foundation, and Ministry of Science and Higher Education uh, of Russia. And uh, also she is participating in different uh, other funded projects. In 2013, she was awarded with a personal scholarship of Halda Topso Foundation and was working as a leading scientist at Halda Topso Research Lab in Denmark. And her research area and interest include fundamental approaches to the tailored synthesis of graphene oxide and related composite materials, exploration of their properties, as well as their potential engineering applications. Uh, our next jury member is Dr. Pugan G. Uh, he from Hebe University of Technology. <clears throat> uh, Dr. G completed his bachelor, master, and PhD degrees from the Peter the Great St. Petersburg Polytechnic University in Russia. He specializes in powder metallurgy and composite materials, and currently he is uh, employed in the School of Material Science and Engineering of the Hebei University of Technology in China, and also internationally in the Institute of Laser and Welding Technology of St. Petersburg State Marine Technical University in Russia. Uh, according to Scopus, Dr. G has an age index of 16, with more than 65 publications and specialized mainly in materials microstructure, mechanical properties, and applications of new materials. Uh, our next jury member is Professor Dmitry Lubchenko from KTH Royal Institute of Technology. Uh, Professor <clears throat> received his bachelor, master, and PhD degrees in applied physics and mathematics from the Department of Physical and Quantum Electronics of Moscow Institute of Physics and Technology. Uh, he has held various positions around the world with a number of institutes, uh, including the Institute of Radio Engineering and Electronics of Russian Academy of Sciences, University of Liverpool, Helsinki University of Technology, KTH, Trinity College, and other universities listed here on the slide. He was also a member of a UMA General assembly from 2016 to 2018 
and uh, his research interests include the developments of new materials for electromagnetic and optoelectronic application. And he is currently has H index of 20 and with all of 200 uh, publications. Uh, our next jury member is Professor Alexei Salimon from Skultech. Uh, he is currently working in the group of hierarchically structured materials at the Center of Digital Engineering at Skultech. He received a candidate of science degree from the Mises University in 1997. His age index is 21 and he has more than 115 publications. Uh, he also has more than 20 years of experience in the field of new materials and technologies, <clears throat> including nanostructures, metals and alloys, quasi-crystalline materials, intermetallics, bulk metallic glasses, composites and others. Uh, between 2002 and 2004, he developed the expert system for the funding of applications for new materials under the leadership of Professor Ashby in INPJ Grenoble. And he has a wide practice experience as equipment engineer in industry, in different industries, producing oil and gas equipment and related parts with this. Uh, next dream member is Professor Alek Talashko from Peter the Great, St. Petersburg Polytechnic University. Uh, Professor Talashko was born in the city of Khabarovsk. In 1986, he received the specialty of an engineer metallurgist in metal science and heat treatment of metals at the uh, Leningrad Polytechnic Institute. In 1991, he received a PhD degree from the Institute of Silicate Chemistry of Russian Academy of Sciences. And then in 1999, he received the Doctor of Technical Science degree, and he has been working at the St. Petersburg Polytechnic University as a full professor and also the head of material science department at St. Petersburg State Marine University. And during his career, he has also worked as visiting science in KTH Royal Institute of Technology in Stockholm, in Stuttgart, and in Korea Institute of Material Science. <clears throat> Uh, next jury member is Professor Alexei Shonek. Uh, he from Skoltech. He received his PhD degree in physics in 2007 and Doctor of Science in Biophysics in 2017 from Saratov State University in Russia. He worked as a postdoctoral researcher in Queen Mary University in the United Kingdom and at the Max Planck Institute of Colloids and Interfaces in Germany. And he was also a group leader at the Remote Control Theranostic System Laboratory Institute of Nanostructures and Bio Systems in Saratov, Russia. And uh, he is holder of the prestigious Alexander von Humboldt Foundation <laughs> Scholarship of 2012. His scientific research interests include nanotechnology, nanobiotechnology, label free molecule detection, Raman and surface enhanced Raman spectroscopy, and their applications. Uh, Currently, Alexei is an assist associate professor of the biophotonics group at the Skoltech, and he has an age index of 30 and over 80 publications. So now let me introduce the supervisor, Professor Albert Nasibulin. <clears throat> uh, professor Nasibulin received his doctorate degree in physical chemistry in 1996 from Kemerovo State University and then habilitation or doctor of science at St. Petersburg State Technical University in 2011. <clears throat> Until December 2022, he was an adjunct professor at two departments in Alta University in Finland. He has held the post of research fellow in the Academy of Finland from 2006 to 2011, and currently he holds the position of professor of the Russian Academy of Sciences uh, since 2018. Uh, he specializes in aerosol synthesis of nanomaterials, their growth dynamics and applications. He has currently over than 350 publications and 40 patents with an age index of 67. Currently, he is a full professor at the Center for Photonic Science and Engineering at Skoltech, where he has launched three startup companies. And let me introduce also the co supervisor, Professor Fyodor Fyodorov. He graduated from Volgograd State University in 2007 and then successfully defended his 
candidate of science thesis in electrochemistry in Saratov State Technical University in 2010. In 2011, Fyodor joined the Laboratory of Functional Materials in the Leibniz Institute for Solid State and Materials Research in Dresden in Germany and worked there as a postdoc until 2012. And in 2013, Fyodor moved to the <coughs> Laboratory of Sensors and Microsystem at Yuri Gagarin State Technical University in Saratov. Uh, his uh, research interests mainly focused on the development of new gas analytical systems for selective gas identification, such as smart sensors. Uh, as a visiting scholar, he worked as a GSI Darmstadt and Saarland University in Germany, and also as a Swiss Federal Laboratory for Material Science and Technologies in Switzerland, supported by the Art Fellowships and also grant of Russian Minister of Education and Science. In 2017, Fyodor joined the Laboratory of Nanomaterials at Skoltech, and currently he is holding the position of assistant professor and working on the development of gas analytic, analytical units. And let me introduce our PhD candidate, Mikhail Bulavsky. Uh, he graduated from Novosibirsk State University in 2019 with a specialty degree in chemistry. His thesis was devoted to the influence of the fluorination degree on the chemoresistive properties of fluorinated graphene films. Later that year, Mikhail entered the material science and engineering program at Skoltech here. Uh, the research during the PhD study was focused on the modification of single wall carbon nanotube films for applications. Uh, in the results of the PhD study, two papers were published and two oral talks were given at the conferences based on the thesis research. Um, okay, so <clears throat> we finished with the introduction. And now, Mikhail, please, you have about 40 minutes for your presentation. Please, the floor is yours. Thank you. First of all, I would like to thank uh, all the people who uh, devoted their time to contribute to the today's defense of mine. Uh, and let me uh, introduce the topic uh, of my uh, PhD thesis, which is hybrid functional materials based on single walled carbon nanotubes. So uh, single walled carbon nanotubes uh, uh, is a known material for uh, its combination of unique properties such as metallic semiconducting uh, electrical properties, uh, high thermal conductivity, the good chemical and uh, uh, physical mechanical stability, high specific surface area and possibility of the chemical <coughs> crystallization of the surface. Uh, however, at the same time, uh, this material in a pristine state cannot be applied in a wide range of, of applications due to the number of limitations. So first of all, uh, single wall carbon nanotube, uh, nanotubes, they grow in the mixture of different chiralities, uh, which show uh, different metallic and semiconducting properties. So the resulting material uh, has neither purely metallic nor semiconducting properties, uh, limiting application in the uh, fields requiring uh, single type of, of conductivity. Then during the production of, uh, of single carbon nanotubes, uh, they tend to form agglomerates called bundles, and it limits application of uh, single carbon nanotubes in uh, different applications requiring individual nanotubes, and also uh, hinders the thermal conductivity and also optical properties. Uh, so the opportunity for hybrids uh, uh, based on single carbon nanotubes is that if we modify such type of material, we can bring another properties or modify the properties of the pristine material uh, to make it more close to applications. So there are different approaches to the modification known in the literature uh, is the uh, surface chemical functionalization, uh, application of single carbon nanotube as a substrate for different coatings, uh, production of heterogeneous nanotubes with substitution of carbon atoms with uh, heteroatoms, uh, doping, uh, absorption doping of uh, single carbon nanotubes uh, with uh, uh, donor or, or acceptor of electrons, 
uh, to tune its electronic properties. And finally, uh, another approach is the filling of uh, channels of single carbon nanotubes uh, with different uh, filler materials, materials to improve their properties. So in my uh, thesis, I was focusing on uh, three of these approaches, uh, namely uh, application of single carbon nanotubes as substrate, uh, then doping, and also investigation of filling efficiency towards the filling uh, with different substances. So the thesis structure is as follows. So chapter one is devoted to bilateral doping of single carbon nanotube films. Uh, chapter two is uh, devoted to electrochemical opening uh, for, for filling with uh, solution approach. And uh, the final third chapter is uh, about uh, hybrid materials made of uh, freestanding single carbon nanotube films uh, covered with uh, polyaniline uh, for flexible supercapacitors. So the research aim of, of this uh, thesis research was to investigate scientific foundations for the development of modification protocols of the single carbon nanotube thin films, uh, establishment of the influence of electrochemical treatment on the structure and filling efficiency, and also uh, investigation of the obtained material properties. To achieve this aim, the following uh, objectives were stated, uh, namely the development of uh, uh, bilateral doping method, uh, with solution of uh, chloroauric acid, uh, evaluation of uh, um, this material efficiency as a transparent conductive film, uh, then development of uh, controllable electrochemical opening approach uh, using um, cyclic voltammetry protocols, um, evaluation of filling efficiency of the electrochemically opened uh, nanotube thin films, uh, investigation of the uh, impact of freestanding nanotube thickness and uh, uh, number of polymer deposition cycles on the properties of the uh, hybrid composites made of nanotubes and polyaniline. And finally, evaluation of the performance of these hybrid materials um, towards uh, supercapacitor performance. So let's move to the chapter one. Is devoted to the uh, method of bilateral doping of single carbon nanotube thin films, uh, which was uh, done uh, with the application of thermal treatment in the ambient air atmosphere, uh, with followed uh, followed with the uh, filling by the solution method with the ethanol solution of the chloroauric acid. But first of all, to go through all this, we started with the uh, identification of the electronic uh, state and electronic properties of uh, uh, our thin films. And also uh, we were focused to investigate the structure. So uh, let me start with the uh, graph that you observe here on the slide. Uh, it shows the density of states uh, for uh, typical single wall carbon nanotube uh, films, uh, particularly metallic and semiconducting. You can uh, observe that they have uh, one half singularities in the density of state structure. Uh, and also uh, we can expect the transitions between the states in the optical spectra, uh, which, uh, which is observed on the graph uh, at the bottom of the slide. And also you can see that the, uh, on the slide, you can see the changes of absorbance of uh, different uh, uh, one half singularity peaks uh, and we can see that initial uh, initially we have the growth of s11 uh, transition peak uh, absorbance uh, up to 350 degrees centigrade treatment and then all the peaks show uh, a remarkable drop of the intensity of the absorbance uh, so we can attribute such behavior to the initial desorption of the adsorbed gaseous species from the ambient air, uh, which happens up to temp uh, treatment temperature uh, 350 degrees C, uh, which is followed with uh, um, destruction of the single carbon nanotube structure at the higher temperatures applied. Uh, then we also evaluated how the uh, equivalent sheet resistance changes uh, with the 
uh, application of different treatment temperatures. And uh, we can see that uh, it uh, gradually, uh, gradually rises, uh, which means uh, that we, we have uh, um, different processes affecting uh, effective con conductivity uh, and resistance uh, in our samples, uh, which is, uh, can be explained by the, again, desorption of the adsorbed species uh, uh, up to 350 degrees C temperature, uh, followed with the destruction of single wall carbonatube structure with the introduction of structural defects, which also scatters uh, uh, electrons uh, during the process of conductance. Uh, another way to uh, to track the structural changes uh, is the Raman spectroscopy. And uh, the known ratio of uh, G to D modes uh, of Raman spectra of single wall carbonate tubes uh, can show us the quality, uh, so quality of the structure and the amount of structural defects. And here you can see that it uh, gradually decreases with the application of uh, treatment uh, uh, at elevated temperatures. And also another sensitive uh, feature is the radial breathing mode uh, of the Raman spectra of single carbonate tubes, uh, which uh, starts to lose intensity of its peak uh, at the, with the application of uh, treatment temperature above 400 degrees centigrade. Then we apply the ethanol solution uh, doping uh, of, of the treated films. And here, uh, we observe the dependence of the equivalent sheet resistance of uh, treated and then uh, doped uh, thin films. And we observe that the equivalent sheet resistance, which is the main uh, feature to characterize the transparent conductor films, uh, it decreases up to about 31 uh, ohms per square uh, with the application of 400 degrees uh, uh, Celsius uh, treatment. At the same time, the changes in the optical spectra also supports the idea of the doping effect. Uh, we observe the suppression of the uh, one half singularity transitions S11, S22, and M11, and even, uh, even um, greater impact of the uh, doping leads to the, uh, uh, to the appearance of the intersubband plasmon in the, uh, in the optical spectra of the single carbon tube films. Besides this, uh, another uh, feature that can show us the efficiency of the uh, doping is the Raman spectroscopy again, uh, the shift of the G mode uh, and change of shape, uh, particularly degrees of intensity of 2D mode, uh, propose uh, that we have P-type doping in such type of the material. Finally, uh, the observation uh, in transmission electron microscopy uh, show us that uh, we have uh, decorated uh, single wall carbon tube thin films, uh, but at the application of temperature uh, of thermal treatment uh, about 400 degrees centigrade, we start to observe the uh, nanowires formed within the channel of single wall carbon nanotubes, supporting the idea that uh, this higher efficiency of doping uh, when film is treated at such temperature is due to the formation of these nanowires and the processes connected to the formation of these nanowires. So, uh, then we, we try to evaluate the doping efficiency origination. And uh, here you can see the mechanism of the pristine uh, single carbon tube doping, which is based mainly on the uh, uh, electron transfer pro processes between uh, carbon tubes uh, and uh, uh, gold containing uh, substance. And also we observe that some species that, that participate in this process are gold uh, one plus containing species. Uh, which we also um, might need to account uh, to, to describe the, the doping process. So here you can see the different half reactions that might take place and uh, their standard electrode potentials. And we observe that uh, gold, uh, uh, gold one plus species, they have even higher standard electrode potential than uh, the gold three plus containing ions, which means that such type of the ions has uh, higher tendency towards the electron extraction from the material. However, 
uh, we need to uh, tell that the concentration and metastability, low concentration metastability of uh, these ions cannot fully explain the uh, higher doping efficiency when, uh, when application of uh, thermal treatment uh, is used. Uh, we measured open circuit potential transients to show that indeed, even with uh, uh, electrochemical approach, we observe that thermal treated, treated samples uh, have uh, possess uh, higher feeling efficiency and high level of electron extraction from the uh, single carbon tube thin film. Uh, and also we applied the um, calculations to support the idea that the uh, high efficiency of the doping originate from the uh, bilateral character of, of the doping with the uh, opening of, of single carbon tube thin films. And here we show that uh, the highest level of uh, Fermi, uh, Fermi level shift observed for the bilateral doping of single wall carbon tubes. So basically here we show that bilateral doping is indeed uh, lead to the more efficient doping. So then we go to the chapter two which is devoted to electrochemical opening of single carbon tubes for filling. <laughs> so a filled carbon tube can be used in various applications starting from electrocatalysis and sensors towards, uh, toward, towards uh, magnetic uh, uh, materials and energy, uh, not energy, but uh, uh, information storage. Uh, but there is a problem that the process that we described above for uh, the conventional uh, treatment in the uh, ambient uh, air atmosphere uh, can, ten can lead to the structural defects which decrease the filling efficiency. So uh, this uh, behavior is described also in the molecular dynamics uh, uh, papers published. So uh, we were focused on the way to mildly uh, open single carbon tube uh, end caps uh, without main destruction of the sidewalls. So uh, for this approach, uh, for, for, this, uh, uh, for this goal, we uh, applied cyclical telemetry uh, treatment, which is potential dynamic method. And we varied the upper vertex potential of the treatment. Uh, so here on the slide, you can see the comparison of the uh, iron-free sample which where iron nanoparticle residuals uh, were removed using the dual heating uh, and this comparison to the uh, pristine single carbon tube thin films. So comparing these two different materials, we can uh, claim which cyclic altimetry features are connected to the uh, carbon atoms and which are connected to the uh, iron consisting in the material and it might be helpful to understand at which particular uh, upper vertex potential uh, of the CV treatment leads to the opening and exposure of the iron towards the electrolyte. And here uh, the features, the uh, two pairs of peaks uh, A1, C1 and A2, C2, they are carbon related, they're known to be carbon related, but uh, A2, C2 is not uh, very specified, not uh, described in, in literature so uh, elaborately. Uh, however, its presence in both samples uh, supports the idea that it's carbon related. Finally, additional features that we observe in the pristine uh, samples such as uh, peaks A3, uh, pair of peaks A4C4 and also peak A5, they should be connected to the processes connected to iron. Uh, particularly iron stripping, uh, transformations uh, between iron 2 plus and iron 3 plus ions. Uh, and uh, also peak A5 might be uh, somehow related to the opening of the nanotubes and the uh, oxidation of iron, uh, since it is located quite uh, close to the potential starting from which we start to observe the effect of the opening. Uh, to provide the evidence for the opening, we uh, try to evaluate the structure using uh, well-known methods such as Raman spectroscopy, which showed that 
uh, with the application of electrochemical treatment, we have changes in the uh, ABN mode, uh, meaning that we have the structural changes. Uh, and important thing to note at this graph is that changes uh, with the application of potentials up to 1.3, uh, oh, sorry, 1.1 1, 1 volt is uh, they, uh, their Raman spectra in uh, ABN uh, mode uh, ranges, they stay close to each other, which means they are, uh, they, we can expect that they will be close to the, uh, each other structure. However, with the application of the higher apergotics potential of electrochemical treatment, we observe even further degrees of, of this peaks and peak uh, intensity, uh, meaning further destruction of the Stru uh, structure of the material. Uh, also, we try to evaluate uh, the structural changes using sheet resistance, since uh, if we apply electrochemical treatment and we change the structure, we introduce the defects, it should somehow uh, be noted in the sheet resistance uh, due to the scattering of electrons. And here we observe that the uh, ratio of, uh, of initial film sheet resistance to the final film, uh, film sheet resistance, it changes and uh, we have the eff effect of the, uh, of the doping by oxygen formed during the process, which is uh, quite significant uh, up to treatment at 1.3 uh, volts uh, versus RHE. But uh, when we go to the higher treatment potentials, again, we have the increase in this uh, sheet resistances uh, ratio, which, uh, which can be connected to the uh, more amount of structural defects, uh, scattering electrons efficient, more efficiently. And finally, we applied XPS spectroscopy. Uh, and here the main trend is that with the application of the electrochemical treatment, we have uh, smaller amount, smaller contribution of the sp2 carbon uh, to the uh, c1s uh, spectra and uh, higher contribution of the oxygen containing functional groups and uh, sp3 carbon. Uh, however, we observe that one sample is uh, quite distinguishable from others, uh, which is a sample treated at 1.1 volts versus RHE, uh, which has slightly higher sp2 carbon contribution, much slower uh, sp3 carbon contribution, and also has uh, some amount of oxygen contained functional groups, which can originate from the uh, defects formation and the opening of the nanotubes as well. So then we went to the filling process uh, with the gold chloride uh, solution again, and uh, we built the distribution of the nanowires formed uh, during this process in the nanotube film. Uh, and we can observe that it's changing quite, quite significantly, uh, particularly at uh, treatment uh, with 1.1 volts versus RHE, we observe the uh, quite uh, high, uh, let's say, uh, amount of the uh, nanowires uh, that have uh, lengths about 30 nanometers. Uh, which is the second mode of, of this uh, distribution. And it leads to the uh, quite high uh, specific nanowire lens, which is one of the ways uh, to uh, estimate the filling efficiency. Um, by the way, we also applied the comparison of these two applied methods uh, filled similarly. And uh, we showed that the, uh, indeed the uh, number the amounts of uh, nanowires uh, formed uh, uh, during the doping when we apply thermal treatments uh, the, the amount of this nanowires is quite high by the uh, mean length is much much less than for the sample treated electrochemically at 1.1 volt versus RHE resulting in the, uh, into the uh, final result about two times less uh, in the specific nanowire lengths per unit area of the CNT film so we can claim that the electrochemical approach, if uh, used properly, can lead to the high filling efficiency than the thermal uh, treatment. And finally, 
let's move to another way of the modification of single wall carbon tube films uh, is the electro deposition of poly polyaniline on the freestanding uh, single wall carbon tube film. Uh, so here you can observe the uh, schematic of this process and also samples how they look like after the electro deposition of polyaniline. And uh, we noted that uh, when we apply uh, thin films uh, with different uh, thickness, uh, meaning different transmittances as well, we observe the different rates of the growth of the polyaniline. That's why we try to uh, estimate the uh, normalized charge over the cycle number to, to understand uh, what is the region of cycle uh, cycles uh, of polyaniline deposition uh, reliable to the comparison of samples uh, to each other. And uh, finally, we, we show that uh, the cycles number range between 40 and 70 is uh, showing linear dependence and uh, might be used uh, reliably to comparison of, uh, of different films. Also, we estimated the mass of, uh, we measured the mass of the resulting uh, composites uh, to show the differences in the uh, growth rate of polyaniline on the surface of the film. And uh, the main results here are that uh, polyaniline deposition, uh, it depends both on the number of cycles, which is uh, obviously, uh, but also important thing that it depends on the transmittance of the initial single wall carbon tube film. Uh, and then we move to the evaluation of the structure of the material to understand, uh, to, to relate the growth processes to the structure, uh, growth features, uh, and also the, the resulting electro, uh, electrochemical performance. So important thing to note here is that when we apply uh, thin single wall carbon tube films, uh, we observe that uh, the deposition of the polyaniline starts uh, uh, inside of the network of the single wall carbon tubes. And we can observe that the uh, uh, morphology of such type of composites uh, copies the, uh, the morphology of the initial single wall carbon tube uh, network. However, if we apply uh, high amounts of cycle numbers or thicker films, it leads to the uh, growth of the bulk uh, polyaniline on the surface. Uh, with some effects that we will describe further. Also, we try to check uh, if uh, our samples are comparable to each other in terms of the polyaniline uh, functional composition. And we showed that uh, uh, using our spectroscopy, we showed that uh, features of the polyaniline are quite uh, similar to different samples uh, with some uh, variations in the intensity, which may be caused by the thickness of the uh, polymer layer on the film. Another way uh, that we applied to uh, analyze uh, functional state of the composites is the uh, X-ray photoelectron spectroscopy. And uh, here uh, we show that uh, using C1S uh, peak, uh, we observed that uh, uh, about half of the carbon atoms uh, pre present uh, in the uh, sp2 state with uh, some uh, uh, cc single cc and single c and bonds and also oxygen oxygen nitrogen contain functional groups uh, then we show that uh, um, uh, both charged and neutral the neutral charge uh, species of uh, uh, nitrogen present in the sample, uh, which is uh, uh, important to understand for the understanding of conductivity of, of thin films. So we have uh, chest species which uh, provide us uh, the conductivity of this type of uh, polymer. And also we show that some contribution uh, of, uh, um, of the sulfuric, uh, of the sulfate uh, anions uh, also uh, contribute to the concentration of the oxygen uh, in the XPS spectra of, of the final material. So now to the uh, electrochemical evaluation of the material performance. First of all, we applied uh, three electrode cell um, uh, characterization, uh, three electrode cell cyclic voltammetry to uh, 
to understand what are the specific processes that happen at the film, uh, but also we were focused on the uh, specific uh, uh, capacity of, of this type of the material, which is quite dependent. We showed that it's quite dependent on the cell discharge process, uh, which in case of three electrode cell configuration, when the electrical contact is realized through the uh, nanotube film, is dependent mainly on the thickness of the CNT film. And the thinner is the film, the higher is its uh, uh, sheet resistance and meaning uh, less um, uh, self-discharge leading to the higher resulting uh, um, specific capacitance. Also, we showed that the highest uh, specific capacitance uh, was uh, uh, for the uh, material um, made on the uh, based on the 95% transmittance in gold carbon tube film with the 50 cycles of uh, uh, of polyanilin deposition, uh, which can also somehow show that it's optimal conditions in terms of uh, diffusion of uh, protons uh, uh, towards the polymer, which is responsible for the conductivity of this type of polymer. Then we move to the two electrode cell, which is uh, quite different from the three electrode cell in terms of the electrical contact which we made. And uh, in two electrode cell, the electrical contact is made through the polyanilin. Uh, so mainly the thickness of the polyanilin layer is responsible for the self discharge. And uh, here we could expect, and we observe it experimentally, that uh, thicker the film, uh, thicker the layer of the uh, polymer on the uh, single wall carbon tube network. Uh, the lower is the self discharge and the higher specific capacitance. Also, we applied the uh, long, uh, long time cycling uh, during 5,000 cycles, and we show that uh, capacitance retention after 5,000 uh, 5, cycles and columbic efficiency are quite typical for the uh, polymer material used in supercapacitors. And finally, to show that this type of the material can be applied in flexible uh, supercapacitors, not only in just uh, supercapacitors which can uh, work as synthesized, we made the device uh, on the PDMA substrate uh, where the electrode uh, connection was done through the uh, single carbon tube film. And we show that the capacitance uh, during the uh, bending decreased about 35 uh, percent. However, it uh, could be optimized with the cell geometry. And also, we should know that the uh, economic efficiency of the band sample was even higher than for, uh, for the flat uh, geometry of, of the uh, two electrode cell device. So let me move to the conclusions. So we showed the novel and simple method of uh, bilateral uh, doping, which is more efficient than uh, doping only from the outside. Uh, and we show that the uh, best conditions for, for this type of uh, uh, doping uh, is uh, at the thermal treatment uh, in the range of three to 400 degrees centigrade, um, which, um, which matches with the uh, temperature of the single carbon tube opening without uh, uh, major changes in the structure, I would say, like in, uh, in, uh, if we compare samples between each other. Uh, then uh, we showed that uh, transparent conductive film with the uh, equivalent sheet resistance of 31 ohms per square can be obtained with the application of such method. Uh, we showed uh, that with the application of uh, cyclic altimetry, uh, treatments, uh, the uh, defects formation and the opening of the single carbon tube film happens in three different stages where the uh, conditions of 1.1 volt versus RHE uh, matches the trade off uh, between the efficient opening and uh, uh, with moderate level of uh, wall defects, which leads to the uh, fill in efficiency of about uh, 1,700 meters per. Uh, per square centimeter of the um, Sinti film uh, for the film of the 87% transmittance. Uh, then 
uh, we showed that the weight of the composite depend on the thickness of the film initially used for the uh, polyanilin electrodeposition, which is mainly caused uh, mainly caused the effect uh, on the uh, structure of the resulting material. Uh, and also we show that the type of the uh, the type of the electric contact uh, also plays a significant role uh, where the um, uh, in three electrode cell uh, contact is made through the uh, single carbon tubes, meaning that the thinner films are better for lower cell discharge, meaning higher specific capacitance of the resulting material. But in two electrode cell, when contact is made through polyanilin layer, the thicker is the polyanilin layer, uh, the uh, lower self discharge and again the higher specific capacitance so when we use such type of the material we need to pay attention which type of the electrical contact we have uh, so based on this research we have published two papers and one is under review i would like to acknowledge my supervisors uh, professor <laughs> albert nasibulin professor fyodor fyodorov uh, my idc member victoria nikitina also i would like to um appreciate all the PhD defense jury members, uh, my colleagues, uh, Laboratory of Nanomaterials, all the Skolkov Institute of Science and Technology, including Education Department, and uh, special acknowledgement to my family and friends who support me during this research. So that's it for the presentation. So we can move to the questions, I guess. Uh, thank you, Mikhail, for your presentation. So now, dear colleagues, let me open the question and answer sessions. If you have questions, please ask Mikhail. Okay. Thank you, Mikhail. I have a question regarding to the slide number 12 when you have shown the uh, Raman data yeah here uh, in the table on this uh, inset um, you you measure the ratio between the g and d band and uh, why it's uh, increase and uh, then it decrease somehow so it's could you explain this uh, phenomenon um, uh, okay, so first of all, thank you for this question. Uh, I was also asking uh, this question to myself during this research. And uh, first of all, I should note that the uh, D to G ratio in the region from uh, 70 to 80, which is, uh, as, which is typical for most of the samples presented, is quite close to each other if we show the spectra uh, one by one. Uh, overlaid uh, one on top of each other. Uh, but uh, I can note that uh, when we apply the treatment uh, at uh, uh, upper vertex potential 1.7 volt versus RHE, which was, was not mainly discussed in this work, uh, basically due to the major structural uh, defects, uh, structural uh, destruction, uh, by the capillary forces after the treatment when we extract uh, the sample from the electrolyte. Uh, and also this material showed the lowest uh, D to, uh, G to D ratio, which can show that this type of the, um, of the characteristic of the material is uh, uh, typical to analyze the structure uh, and the defects concentration. However, if we combine the data from the Raman spectroscopy and from uh, uh, XPS spectroscopy, we can expect that some amounts of the sp3 hybridized carbon removing from the sample in, in uh, case of the application of electrochemical treatment, since some amounts of amorphous carbon uh, present on, uh, in the sample, and uh, we can expect uh, increase in G2D ratio, basically, uh, um, mainly based on, on this phenomenon with further degrees of this ratio based on the destruction of the structure. Okay, thank you. And this <clears throat> second uh, question uh, regarding the next slide, 13. So in the TM images, you have uh, both this um, 
like uh, non nanowire, gold nanowire structure, which is, I presume, inside of the tubes, and you have certainly have some bright dots on uh, also, it's related to the gold. Is it right? Yeah. It's mainly and, right. Uh, uh, and, this... and are we uh, inside still or outside the tube? Did, can you recognize this or? So uh, thank you for this question. Uh, yes, uh, when we uh, have the dope sample after electrochemical or uh, thermal treatment, we observe both nanowires and nanoparticles. But based on the TM data of the comparison of, uh, um, let's say, uh, not thermally treated and thermally treated sample, I would uh, I, recall to, to that part of the presentation. We can observe that no nanovirus were formed uh, when the treatment is uh, at low temperatures, and we could expect that these nanoparticles are forming at the surface of the single carbon tube film. But when we have uh, the opening phenomena, uh, we, as a result, we observe the nanovirus formed, uh, and we expect it to be inside of the uh, single carbon tube, uh, carbon tubes, and also it is confirmed uh, in the uh, TM images of the uh, nanotubes fields uh, uh, after thermal treatment that uh, we might observe the nanotubes at the edge of the bundle also filled with uh, gold, and uh, these uh, nanotubes. Uh, uh, this nanovirus they copy the uh, the diameters of nanotubes which is also quite important to highlight to attribute nanovirus mainly to the filling of the channels but not formation on the surface of the nanotube maybe last uh, last question regarding to slide 19 uh, when you show a specific capacitance on the uh, uh, yeah, this uh, when you bend uh, your your sample and this B, B uh, image, uh, you first you have uh, some drop and then stepwise increase. Uh, is it uh, somehow related to the uh, increase the capacitance during during this uh, cycles bend and up, uh, back and up, or? Uh... Yes, I hope I understood the question properly. So uh, if we regard the uh, figure uh, B, we applied the different current densities for charging and discharging uh, process of the uh, flat device. Uh, but uh, the bending experiments are presented on the figure C. And uh, mainly here we uh, show just consecutive uh, consecutive uh, cycles of charge and discharge uh, without re uh, re um, without repetitive bending and uh, flattening process. We just measured consecutive samples in the flat uh, uh, flat geometry, and then uh, we were analyzing the the same charge and discharge and uh, curves when the sample was bent. So there was not uh, there was no uh, experiment on repetitive uh, bending and flattening. Thank you. We have another question. Okay, thank you for your report. I have some questions. Please slide nine. Mm. Oh, no, no, next slide. Oh, no, 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 eight, eight. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, okay. On the picture E, what is the white spot on this picture? Where is your scale bar on this picture of same images? If we talk about uh, TM images, the mm. scale bar on them are uh, uh, A, B, and C are 10 nanometers, mm -hmm. and for image uh, D, uh, the scale bar is 2 nanometers. For if, team, uh, next two pictures. Uh, 
next to what pictures. What is the I white would... spot? Is it uh, our nanoparticles or maybe I, dust? I, I would <laughs> expect it to be the uh, gold nanoparticle mm -hmm. uh, since it has the more or less typical size for gold nanoparticles observed for the uh, other TM images with uh, different uh, scale, uh, with different uh, magnifications. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. And um, uh, slide 13. Again. Is this spot only not gold nanoparticle? Yeah? Regarding this, uh, uh, these TM images, uh, we have uh, mainly the uh, gold nanoparticles, which are small nanoparticles, but uh, uh, if we talk about the uh, huge nanoparticles that we mm -hmm. have, it's mainly uh, uh, kappa, which is <coughs> formed in, in, uh, in such uh, nanoparticles during the, um, during the transfer of the top sample while it's wet on the TEM grid, which is made uh, uh, of copper, uh, we see that uh, if we apply TEM grids made of uh, gold, we don't have such huge uh, nanoparticles on the surface of the uh, single carbon tube uh, films. But with the application of the copper, uh, uh, we observe these particles and also uh, we applied the uh, uh, analysis uh, of uh, EDS analysis of uh, of these nanoparticles and smaller nanoparticles, and uh, we also confirmed that uh, huge nanoparticles, uh, about 50 nanometers in size and higher, uh, they originate from the uh, copper, while small mm -hmm. nanoparticles originate from gold. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. And we can see gold aggregates on the single wall carbon tubes. Uh, are they? only connected with the surface of nanotubes or maybe existing in the solution free form as aggregates. Can you give your comment about it? Uh, maybe could I, could it, is, um, it is connected with excess of chloroauric acid in the uh, synthesis process. Please ask you to uh, rephrase once again. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't get it properly. Um, we can see aggregates of gold nanoparticles. Um, maybe it is um, connected with excess of uh, chloric acid in the solution. And maybe it is free aggregates, uh, which not covered surface of nanotubes. Yeah, understood. So uh, basically, when uh, the application uh, and the development of uh, the uh, doping with uh, chloroauric acid was uh, uh, done in the laboratory, uh, it was shown that uh, this type of uh, uh, doping concentration applied in uh, all the uh, thermal treatments, uh, uh, treatment uh, experiments in uh, uh, electrochemical treatment uh, uh, experiments as well. It was a 15 millimolar, millimolar concentration, which was shown to have the highest performance uh, in terms of the um, in term of the uh, optoelectrical properties. But uh, I would say that, of course, uh, when we uh, dope with the deep coating, which we were doing uh, in the um, most of the experiments, uh, we might have some uh, excessive amounts of the uh, gold chloride solution, which uh, is which can uh, decompose over time and uh, be reduced by the species uh, which present in the atmosphere into some nanoparticles uh, uh, on the surface uh, of the nanotube. So we could expect some nanoparticles be formed. Uh, because of the excess of the chloroauric acid in the solution. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And the second question uh, is, uh, how we proved absence of iron uh, atoms in the nanotubes? How, how we prove absence of, uh, of uh, iron. iron atoms? Mm -hmm. uh, OK, so. Uh, I was not presenting uh, these images in the presentation, but uh, it's quite easy to observe uh, um, in, in other TM images, which I can provide you, uh, which show um, a lot of nanoparticles before 
the electrochemical treatment, if you talk about this, but after electrochemical treatment, we can also observe some, let's say, uh, hollow uh, structures, hollow shells, where the iron nanoparticles were before the electrochemical treatment. So we, uh, uh, when we uh, measure, the, when we collect the uh, images of, uh, um, of electrochemically treated uh, samples before the doping, we observe absence of any metal on the surface and inside of the single carbon tube material. At all? All metal? Uh, at some conditions, uh, uh, let's say starting from 0 0.9 and 1.1 mm -hmm. volts, we observe absence of uh, iron in the material after electrochemical treatment. Thank you. Okay, dear colleagues, do you have any further question? Yeah, please. Um, thank you for a good presentation. I have a few questions. First of all, the some uh, statements like you said that carbon nanotubes they are very stable in a sense but yeah. in the same time we heard about sensing sensing and stable can you comment somehow about that uh, i would say that uh, uh, single carbon nanotubes they might be considered stable if we talk about the uh, room temperature but if we apply uh, elevated temperature or chemicals, uh, we have the ability to modify the surface of nanotubes. So if we talk about room temperature materials, uh, uh, we uh, would expect the chemical stability of the material and uh, only adsorption might happen, uh, might be expected on such type uh, uh, of the material uh, stored at room temperature. But at the same time, at elevated temperature, uh, we introduce structural defects, including oxygen containing functional groups. Uh, so nanotubes uh, is, uh, uh, can combine both of these properties uh, at the same time. Okay. Oh, uh, about chemical modification, is it you call tuning? Or I think that my, my opinion that tuning is something which is coming back. So you change something and it's like you apply voltage after applying? Yes, uh, here, here we applied uh, cyclic voltammetry, which is potential dynamic uh, regime of uh, electrochemical treatment. So it was not just the application of some potential and uh, holding at this potential over a long time. But we were trying to, we were looking for uh, doing it mildly. That's why we uh, use cyclic voltammetry and at the same time application of cyclic voltammetry allow us to uh, register features at the same time with the electrochemical treatment itself. So we can uh, record features and, uh, and uh, use it to display the opening phenomena happening and at particular uh, upper vertex potential. Okay. Uh, another question is about the of course, this feeling efficiency is kind of strange parameter, but maybe you should give more, more definition on that, or just you can call anything by anything. No, just okay. Thank you for for this comment. Uh, so the feeling efficiency in the way that was used in this thesis research is uh, the. Uh, Lengths of the gold nanovice formed within the uh, within the film of carbon nanotubes of specific thickness, which is uh, 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 which is taken as a ratio to the area of the nanotube thin film. So the high is the area of the nanotube uh, thin film that we analyze. The high is the length of the nanovice. So that's why we use some specific value. Uh, divided by the area from which it was measured to uh, compare different samples more reliably than it is if we just uh, take the overall length of the nanovirus. Uh, but uh, at the same time, as far as I remember, I uh, had uh, questions uh, from the jury members about the uh, of uh, the nanotubes filled with uh, gold. And uh, uh, I was... Uh, proposing the method to analyze uh, somehow uh, 
uh, trying to estimate this uh, this value in the answers to the comments to thesis and uh, i would say that uh, it's not quite high but at the same time we show the trend to the increase when the application of the treatment uh, uh, is is used during the uh, during the uh, experiments with the single carbonatic thin films so i hope i i answered the question but i yeah. uh, i hope i i didn't over complicate everything the, well some general comment i can also give that the term uh, you you <clears throat> put in equations like t is it could be either temperature or trans uh, transmittance or anything it should be a bit more uh, just uh, yeah, uh, thank you. You cannot use the same term in the, during the whole thesis, so just sometimes it's confusing. Uh, also, can you please go to the page 12 and the, the uh, square resistance? Where is it? In the table here. What do I mean by divided and square in minus? Is that kind of misprint here or what? Uh, it was presented like it's it's not divided it's just uh, uh let's say the shoot resistance was measured in ohms per square because it was measured using the flow probe and it's like uh, shoot resistance is known to be measured in ohms per square so here i provide the, the value in uh of shoot resistance uh, with uh, ohms per square units yeah but it is missing the minus and a bit confusing anyway uh okay okay thank you uh i have one question more the uh the the general also comment for the figures this is in a thesis is very difficult to without a color printing to to distinguish and to understand you can I was picking up from from the presentation the, the difference. Yeah, I, I would say that uh, it's a valuable comment, but at the same time, uh, I a bit happy that I was attracting attention towards the presentation and towards what I'm describing here. So somehow it's uh, this disadvantage turned into uh, the opportunity. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you. Do you have any questions? Yeah, please. Uh, please, uh, slide number 13, feeling efficiency again. So uh, we discussed this during the uh, processing of my uh, um, jury member report. Uh, on the application of uh, uh, methods for image uh, processing. The question is that uh, your specific uh, lens, nanowire lens, is divided, is given as kilometers per square centimeter. Square centimeter of what? Of uh, film or of uh, nanowire uh, area? Yes. Uh, thank you for, for, for this question. Uh, basically, we used it as aerial dense aerial lengths of nanowire. So it's uh, this area is the area of the uh, single wall carbonate tube uh, film, because uh, in these uh, in these experiments we were using the uh, single wall carbonate tube film of the particular uh, thickness, which was tracked with the particular uh, absorbance at uh, 550 nanometers, which is known to be uh, proportional. Uh, to the thickness of the uh, film uh, in the literature. So with this particular thickness, we get these uh, values of the specific lengths, uh, which is length of nanowires accumulated, uh, uh, divided by the area of, of the nanotube film. Okay, so you just took I mean that uh, you um, didn't explain in your in your answers to the comments that you calculated or me or uh, measured the length of nanowires manually. Yes. Yes. And uh, what was the denominator? 
how did you uh, calculate the area? Uh, okay, so we have the, the scale bars uh, and we can apply them to calculate the area of the image. Yeah, so area of the image. Yeah, okay, thank you. Because you can see that uh, in each area you have different area of nanotubes. Yeah, it is, it is more or less clear from these uh, images. So, uh, I mean, that I would say that the, in general, this uh, method is, is okay, but you have to modify it to make it more robust. Okay, because you see yeah. that the density of nanowires and area, specific area in each uh, view field is different. Uh, yes, I can completely agree with this, but uh, at the same time, I might uh, somehow approach this that uh, the uh, area occupied by the bundles of nanotubes uh, in the image, it may vary from sample to sample, uh, and it can also be affected by different factors, such as uh, processing of the material during the, uh, during the uh, yeah. electrochemical treatment so, thermal. So, so sample preparation. If, if, if we apply, uh, let's say, thermal treatment, the higher is the temperature, the higher is the, uh, uh, let's say, agglomeration of bundles into uh, bigger bundles. And that's why we would have uh, like different pictures uh, uh, in the TM, but at the same time, the amount of nanotubes uh, was the same in the beginning and is at the end uh, since the, uh, we account uh, on the thickness based on the optical properties. Okay, so uh, may I also ask you about what is the, uh, that strange uh, nuage or more in the uh, top right uh, 0 0.7, what is that? Did you see like a constellation or galactic uh, galaxy? Sorry, in the top. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. What what is this? Okay, uh, so uh, these samples <laughs> they are quite sensitive to the uh, beam uh, of the electrons uh, when the TM uh, images are collected. So if we Charging? Uh, say, uh, is it charging? Yeah, it's 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 not it's not charging. It's more like uh, evaporation and uh, condensation of uh, some amorphous carbon species on the surface of the uh, of the um, spot under the electrons beam. So it's like a known behavior of carbon materials, and specifically for. Uh, materials that uh, we were investigating using it's a, it's a burning spot yeah yeah if if we have a very high magnification trying to analyze the structure of the nanovirus itself uh, within the nanotubes uh, we uh, cannot reliably uh, acquire the image uh, without the burning of, of uh, carbon at the spot of the measurement Okay, thank you. May, may I ask you to go to slide number 17? Yeah, exactly. So uh, you, give, you give some atomic uh, fracture, atomic uh, proportion of different, uh, of different what? I mean that you see there is something like uh, binding energy, sp2, and uh, is it possible to Convert it to atomic fraction. How do you do it? I would say that it's quite difficult in case when we have uh, a lot of uh, uh, oxygen containing uh, functional groups. Uh, for for these uh, XPS uh, either uh, uh, described in uh, previous uh, chapter. So uh, the um, binding energy might be more or less the same for. Um, for different functional groups. That's why we cannot um, reliably estimate the, uh, the ratio of uh, sp2 carbon in all the carbon that we have in the sample since uh, different functional groups contribute to the same uh, peaks in the model. And they might have different, uh, let's say oxygen, uh, more uh, oxygen atoms connected to it, so we, we cannot make uh, we cannot build the proper uh, proportion between uh, different types of carbon. That's why we apply the uh, comparison of areas of different peaks uh, between each other. Okay, 
So, and the conclusions. And the slide number second, uh, oh, second slide. So you see that capacity, specific capacity, uh, is tremendous, outstanding. 541 farad per gram. So uh, what, are the, what is good and what is bad about this particular composition of your or state of your, of your material? So because this is some sort of, sort of top record result. So why you tried to modify or uh, so why not to stay with this sort of good result? Uh, basically, we just started with uh, different materials trying to investigate the influence between the material properties like thickness and uh, dense structure and then electrical uh, performance uh, in energy storage. So we just it just turned out that uh, one of the materials is uh, quite good, uh, particularly 95% uh, transmitting uh, uh, original film of nanotubes with the 50 cycles of electrodeposition, but it was like outstanding throughout the samples that we had. And uh, uh, I would say that if we apply such type of uh, composite in two electrode cell, it will not show the same uh, capacitance due to the higher self discharge uh, due to thinner uh, layer of the polyaniline. I mean, that. do you believe that this is a reproducible result? Uh, I, I believe that this uh, result is reproducible, but uh, I would say that uh, the bad thing about uh, this sample is, uh, this material is that, as I showed, it showed quite typical stability for all the, uh, all the polymer-based uh, supercapacitors, but at the same time, it's not high enough, let's say, it's not uh, ideal it's uh, they they might degrade quite uh, rapidly so it's like it depends on the on the application and it would depend on the uh, desires if you would uh, look for something which is uh, more stable maybe it's better to look in the uh, in the field of of other supercapacitors showing uh, less uh, specific capacitance, but at the same time, high stability. So it's just about uh, some pros and cons of, of different types of materials, so. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, colleagues, do you have any other questions? Maybe audience <clears throat> in our Zoom have questions. I can see no questions in Zoom at the moment. Okay, if we haven't got any questions, I would like to ask <coughs> jury members to <coughs> sorry to confirm whether you are satisfied or not with the changes made in the PhD studies uh, during your review. So could you please tell whether you're satisfied or not with the changes? Yeah, I am satisfied. Thank you. Satisfied. Okay, I'm satisfied. Thank you. I'm satisfied too. I'm also satisfied. I'm also satisfied. Okay, thank you very much for this. Um, now I think we can close our question and answer session. And now I would like to give the word to supervisor. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, I think I, I'm very happy to be at this at this moment. So when uh, Mikhail is defending to see a very nice presentation, like good answers. And uh, um, this bring me brings me to the times so of when I first time virtually met uh, Mikhail. So it was uh, like four years ago. So we interviewed him by phone. But um, already uh, that uh, gave me uh, like a very good impression about Mikhail. He was a very fluent. So I realized that he has a very uh, sharp mind. So very good reaction. So that's why we decided to invite him to enter the PhD um, studies uh, at Skoltech 
and working with him. Uh, so <clears throat> it was uh, quite obvious uh, that he's uh, uh, hard working, so he could uh, carry out uh, a lot of work work, uh, work during a very short period of time. Sometimes, of course, it required some time to initiate the process of, of, of st starting the work. But whenever he uh, started to work, so the work uh, could be done uh, very quickly. Uh, and also, uh, I would like to remind you the fact that uh, nowadays uh, people are defending their PhD uh, passing through at least two like uh, uh, big uh, problems. What we had is the uh, first is a coronavirus crisis. You probably remember. So the, like many experimentalists were suffering, sitting at home like, without experiments. Yes. So Mikhail also uh, was among those, but I think so he uh, successfully passed it. There is another one. I, I don't want to mention the geopolitical uh, like uh, difficulties, but anyway, I'm very happy and I see that uh, Mikhail is um, done uh, quite well and he is ready as a uh, PhD. Um, and also, I'd like to uh, say here one more fact, not related to science, but he's a very good floorball player, so we'll be missing him. So whenever he was in a good shape, so it was amazing, so nobody could stop him. He makes really goals by goals, yeah. And uh, uh, I believe that the jury members would support me uh, uh, thinking that, uh, stating that, so Mikhail is a ready PhD and could be awarded the degree. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, now I would like to give a word to our supervisor, please. Thank you very much. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> Uh, it is my great pleasure to uh, um, say a few words about uh, um, Mikhail uh, Bulavsky, um, uh, who is uh, defending today. And first of all, uh, I'd like to say that he came here from <clears throat> Novosibirsk State University, and um, he could easily join the team and could easily be in integrated, I mean, to the team. Of, <clears throat> of our lab and when he came and after our discussion with him, we, we um, understood uh, that he's really talented student and he can do a lot of uh, work in different areas um, but I guess really what was really important uh, that he wanted to always to get to the origin of things and to uh, you know, like an onion to uh, um, check the problem, solve the problem, uh, going through layers and layers inside the core of it. Uh, and yeah, after speaking, um, every every uh, person who comes to our lab, uh, you you see whether he's capable, uh, not capable, and during the first, I guess, uh, few months, it was seen that he's capable of doing uh, great work and great things um, uh, in science. Uh, I would like to say that the problem he um, uh, solves and uh, he uh, was, um, uh, was busy with uh, is rather complex and uh, it, it was time consuming and he had to do all the experiments, experiment by experiment over, long, uh, um, over um, ra a rather long time. Uh, and this is this describes him as a first hardworking uh, uh, student when he sees this problem and the student who could, who, who could go to the um, origin of things. Uh, yeah, after all, he uh, after this uh, solving this great problem, broad problem, he. Uh, qualified him rather well in uh, the field of electrochemistry and if you in, in the field of material science and got a really broad experience um, which from my opinion you know is enough to to and uh, to, to be calling him a doctor um, of, of, of sciences uh, PhD um, and yeah with this I, I'd like to thank you uh, for, for letting me say so. Thank you.
Okay, thank you. Uh, so I think now we have moved to the closed deliberation session, right? So I would like to ask our candidate and our guests and the supervisor and co-supervisor to leave the room. So then the jury members can discuss everything related to defense. Yeah, our jury committee has concluded to pass your thesis as is. So we can congratulate you with, uh, with awarding a PhD degree in material science and engineering. So let's congratulate Mikhail with this. Okay, so first of all, I would like to thank all the people who particip participated in today's uh, session. Uh, all the jury members, uh, like who are part of the school tech, who came from very far, all of you, I, I want to appreciate your contribution into all this process. Uh, also, I would like to thank my supervisor and my co supervisor. Uh, for they believe in, in me, their inspiration, their, uh, they were always pushing me forward towards uh, uh, scientific research, towards, towards uh, discovery of the origin of the things, uh, as uh, Fyodor Fyodorov said. Also, I want to thank all the lab of uh, nanomaterials because it was a great pleasure to share all this time with these people. Uh, they were always uh, supporting, uh, and it was like very fun time as well. I would like to thank my family uh, because they they were also uh, took all the pressure that I was taking during all the research. They were they were sharing it with me and taking a part by themselves. And my friends who also are present uh, uh, personally and uh, online. I would like to thank you for being the part of my life during the thesis uh, research that I did here in Skoltec. And finally, the Skoltec uh, representatives, the Skoltec education, all the people who I uh, was working with and uh, who was assisting me during all my uh, PhD study. So thank you all.